Whatever you think of these damn Turks, you cannot call them weaklings. Their army must have marched across the whole bloody desert in about ten days, under this burning sun. Right now, they occupy the far bank of our precious canal. I can see them watching us like wolves. Tomorrow, we shall be upon them like the devil. Salutations, Suez Defenders. Automatic here for Automatic Games. Bringing you another video. This one featuring a raid from Operations Mode, the multiplayer mode in Battlefield 1. This particular raid is based in historical fact uh, an attack on the Suez Canal undertaken by the Ottoman Empire with of course allied defenders the Ottomans are threatening the Suez Canal the bloodline of our empire first we must overrun the enemy lines on the east bank and from there swiftly push through the village of Kantara this will allow us to mount an assault on their artillery positions on Hill 50. When the guns have been silenced... We'll kind of cut off the, uh, the British narrator there. But I'm sure what he meant to say is once those guns fall silent, we, we are victorious. Obviously. So yeah, um, this is going to be early 1915, February to be exact. The Ottomans have undertaken... A, a seriously difficult task. Obviously, the Suez Canal holds great strategic value. It did then, it does today. The British and the Allies as a whole were keenly aware that it may be a target. And their fears were only heightened when the Ottoman Empire entered the war on the side of the Central Powers. Now, as far as the Ottomans and the task that they had ahead of them, they, they were the attackers, and uh, General Pasha, Jamal Pasha, was the uh, Ottoman commander, a Syrian general. And... The only way for him to attack Suez would be to cross the Sinai Desert and to uh, depart from a town called Beersheba, 300 kilometers away from Suez. So he had to march his army across the desert. Uh, generally he tried to march at night. Logistically he would need uh, supplies to undertake this kind of march. And fortunately for him, the Germans went ahead and uh, installed wells along his uh, line of approach. Problem is this, he did not anticipate being spotted by British aircraft. But then again, he's marching an army of 25,000 men across a desert. It's uh, sure enough, he was spotted. So the attackers in this action, they had just come off of a 10-day exhausting march. They, um, they were short on supplies. They had forfeited the element of surprise, and they were outnumbered. I mentioned they had 25,000. Well, the Allies had in and around 30,000 defenders. Those defenders being Australian, New Zealander, Indian, and British. Clearly, uh, the deck was stacked against General Pasha. Meanwhile, on the British side, uh, Sir, well, General Sir John Maxwell, he had everything going for him. Um, he knew of the impending assault. Um, he also had, he also had the benefit that Pasha's troops really only had four days to seize the Suez. After four days they would have had to turn back for more supplies, uh, namely water. So they had a very small window of opportunity to accomplish their goals. Needless to say, the Ottomans lost this battle. Now for gameplay's sake, 
uh, the Ottomans could carry the ga carry the game, carry the day, uh, in this multiplayer mode, of course. But I'm confident we're gonna win. As usual, uh, the soldier I'm playing's name is up in the top right-hand corner, and Corporal Hudson is down. But thanks to a medic, he's uh, back into it. You can see that he's carrying an automatic weapon. Uh, in early 1915, that probably would not be the case. But several of the soldiers I'll be playing will will be carrying single-shot rifles. Rather, I should say, semi-auto. Protect the objective. So we have. Uh, just about seized this sector. Yep, there we go. And so we'll, now we'll push forward to the next sector. Clear the sector. All the while, of course, facing Ottoman resistance. Hudson's <laughs> taken fire. And he's down. Due to a setback on the part of our last battalion, we are being reinforced with an armored train, which, in reality, in the action at the Suez, uh, there really was an armored train deployed. So, uh, that is actually based in fact, unlike some of the Zeppelins that appear over some of the other multiplayer maps, which, uh, of course, no Zeppelin would fly that low over an active battlefield. Uh, this, this really did occur. Now, granted, I don't know if the actual armored train was armed to the hilt, such as this one is, but who's complaining? Certainly not I. Anyhow, we're following Private Kilmead. We'll see how far he manages to get into Contera. Now, Contera was um, sometimes spelled with a K, sometimes spelled with a Q, but it's it's an actual locale uh, near Suez, and it was a site of fighting during this battle. However, the Ottomans, uh, they just launched a feint there, a distraction as it were. But nonetheless, it serves as a, uh, an interesting location for, for this particular map. Here we are behind, uh, Mark V or Mark IV, um, I can't really tell. But, uh, of course they didn't have any armor in 1915. But again, um, makes for good gameplay. Corporal Holmes is down. We'll pick up with Sergeant Neville. Uh, let's talk after action as Neville navigates his way through that fire and launches into a bayonet charge, which falls short. However, we'll keep the camera on him because there are some uh, medics in the vicinity. But yeah, let's discuss after action. General Pasha, the Syrian commander, he, uh, his reputation took a dive after, after their defeat here. His thirsty troops broke into a retreat. They were routed all the way back to uh, Beersheba, which again was 300 kilometers away across the Sinai Desert. Not an easy approach and probably even a more resented retreat path. Now, he wasn't the only notable commander as far as the Central Powers were concerned. Um, there was a Bavarian colonel by the name of Friedrich Kress von Kressenstein. And yeah, you heard that right. Or I assume you did. Uh, Kress von Kressenstein would go on to command troops uh, in the uh, campaign in the Sinai and in Palestine. There went Sergeant Neville. But uh, although uh, Kress von Kressenstein would, would ultimately lose, he would forever be a winner in the game of names. Because, well, because Kress von Kressenstein is why. So now we've taken on the persona of Captain Lawson. As befitting an officer of his rank, he is mounted and is cutting a swath through the Ottomans that he encounters here in Kantara. 
And his horse's name is Tadpole. I just kind of named him on the fly there. Yeah, I know it's absurd, but we're going to stick with that. So Lawson and Tadpole, they're going to move north out of Kantara and up towards Hill 50. And hopefully his, um, his squads will be right behind him. So yeah, ultimately the Ottomans had little to gain. Well, I mean, they had everything to gain, but they gained little from this engagement. And really, they gained nothing. They would never again strike at the Suez. Um, that every engagement they they got into after this in this area what was going to be in the Sinai Desert. And as noted earlier in Palestine, uh, if there was anything to glean from this action, it was that the Allies committed more troops to the Suez and Lawson's down. And the reason that's important, uh, committing troops to the Suez vicinity, is those same troops otherwise would have participated in the Gallipoli campaign, which was ultimately a failure and a disaster. So certainly they could have used the extra manpower in Turkey, uh, maybe would have stood a better chance of gaining a foothold there in Constantinople, which today is Istanbul. Anyhow, Allison just took a hit, but uh, some medics came to the rescue. Now he's trying to hunt down the man that shot him. And that particular Arab soldier, yep, there we go. Just exacted revenge. Now it's up on top of Hill 50. But yeah, that'll do it. And, and to be honest, uh, you can see that we're we're capturing Hill 50 now, which will bring this to a close. But but yeah, to be honest, um, I was not familiar with the Suez, the action at the Suez. So I did do a little reading about it uh, before doing this video. I send it to you, man. And uh, I've pretty much relayed to you the information that I was able to glean. Anyhow, I do appreciate you watching. As usual, this is automatic for automatic games. Um, I, uh, gotta say, if you like this, like this, and I will talk to you soon, friends. Thanks again.